Hello friends and welcome to my first ever illustrated ghost story video which I'm releasing just in time for Halloween um, which feels very fitting. Uh, I'm going to start drawing, I hope you don't mind, I'll get to the story in a minute um, but I do talk slightly faster than I draw so I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about the project in general so it's something that I've wanted to do for a while. And what I'm going to be doing is just telling some of my favourite local ghost stories, some new local ghost stories. Um, I say local, but they're all across the UK and maybe we'll get to some worldwide ones soon, hopefully. Um, but I'm just going to do a few of these videos where I tell you a ghost story that's based in folklore and true stories and I create an illustration for it at the same time so i hope that you guys um enjoy it and enjoy what i do today please do give me um any sort of feedback anything you've got about the video to say as this is a very new thing for me to be doing um and i'm excited to start with you guys so on that note we'll get into the the story now so this chappy here that I am drawing is The Grey Man of Bellister Castle. Um, this is a new story for me, it's one that I've learned especially to illustrate and draw this video um, and I thought with it being Halloween let's go for something a little bit macabre and gruesome. So I've selected The Grey Man of Bellister Castle. So Bellister Castle is based uh, near Holt Whistle in Northumberland which is in the northeast of England for those of you that might not be familiar and the castle is located on the south bank of the River Tyne. So the initial build for the castle was somewhere between the 11th and the 13th century. I know that that seems like a very big period of time <laughs> to say that a castle was built in but every source I've sort of looked at says something different. It says somewhere between the late 11th or the 13th century. Um, the 13th seems to be the most popular one, but I didn't want to definitively say either way as I wasn't sure. So yeah, somewhere between the 11th and 13th century, which makes it somewhere between, I think that's 700 and 1,000 years old. So a very old, very old castle. But unfortunately, the castle that stands there today isn't the same castle that was built all those years ago and that's due to it being sort of extended being left to become derelict at points and um, not looked after changed bits chopped up chopped chopped up chopped, chopped, burnt chopped uh, can't even speak <laughs> bits of the castle being chopped up and changed um, and even burnt down at one point, there was a fire in the 19th century, I think that was quite severe on the castle. So it's had a lot of new faces, a lot of change, um, a very different building to what it was all those years ago. But we all know that it's not that easy to get rid of a ghost. So whether the building itself has changed, this legend has been, been part of it for hundreds of years. Um, so this takes us down to the story today of the Grey Man. So the Grey Man, it says that he wanders the grounds, the woods, just outside of the castle, um, at twilight. Um, although it's been some time since there's been any reports of any sightings of him. So the castle was occupied for some centuries by the Blenkinsop family. So they are also the family that owned the nearby Blenkinsop Castle. Um, and they moved into Bellister Castle in 1542. So the tale goes that one night on a stormy, horrible, rainy, incredibly atmospheric night for any ghost story to begin, um, a minstrel arrived at the castle through the storms and knocked on the door asking if there was somewhere he could stay for the night and hide from the weather in exchange for some light entertainment um, as many sort of traveling entertainers did in those days and he was given access to the castle invited in uh, for some shelter but as the night went on Lord Blenkinsop began to 
have concerns and grow worried about whether the minstrel was in fact who he said he was. The Lord became um, frightened that perhaps the minstrel was actually a spy, someone sent by his neighbours or by his enemies to gain access and information from within the castle, which could be used against Blenkinsop to, to harm him. So the night went on and Lord Blenkinsop became more suspicious. His suspicions grew and they grew to a point that the minstrel started to sense that something was wrong. And he began to tell that he wasn't very welcome, that his host had turned sour towards him and that maybe he was in danger by being there. He possibly didn't work out exactly what the the Lord's issue was in suspecting that he was a spy, but he sensed enough to know that maybe he should leave and clear out. So he did. In the night, he fled the castle for his own safety. And when it was realised, the Lord took this as a confirmation of guilt. Why would an innocent man who had come asking for shelter flee the castle in the middle of the night, in the middle of a, of a storm? They wouldn't. It made no sense. So this was confirmation of guilt as far as the Lord can see and signed the death warrant for the poor minstrel. Um, a party was arranged, a hunting party, um, and the dogs were set after the minstrel. Um, as he fled the nearby woodland to the castle. Now, there are some variations in how the story is told as to whether the dogs got, got to the poor minstrel and tore him limb from limb and left the poor man for dead, or whether the dogs merely halted the minstrel and it was, in fact, um, the... Lord's men that caught him, strung him up and hanged him from a nearby tree. But what all versions of the story agree on is that this was the end of the poor minstrel. So the story then becomes the sightings of the ghost. It is thought that he wanders because of the unjust violent end that he met and that revenge <clears throat> sorry revenge is what this haunted minstrel now has on his mind um so the sightings that are told about the minstrel um that i'm trying to capture here in this illustration are that he is an old man he's got angry eyes and long white hair and a long white beard and he wears tattered grey robes um, he is seen at dusk at twilight as I've said wandering in the woods and it is thought that it is a bad omen to meet the minstrel upon your walk to the point where walkers and locals would avoid those woods at sort of twilight, early evening hours. Um, so it said that the old man is seen, yet with his grey hair, his angry eyes, his tattered grey robes, he is carrying a bundle, but no one can sort of determine what that bundle is. And his, ex his um, visage, his appearance is very disturbing. It said that his long white beard has blood stains within it and that the grey man sports a cut from forehead to chin. So a big deep bloody gash alongside his face um, which would leave nobody wondering that they hadn't just wandered upon an old man on a walk in the woods and that it wasn't in fact the, the terrifying grey man of Bellister Castle. So it's said that it's bad luck to meet him 
is there are stories of some people who have come home frightened with tales that they've seen the minstrel, the grey man's ghost, and have only lived long enough to basically tell the tale um, before they have met their own demise. Um, so it's been a while since we've heard of any grey man sightings themselves. And the castle itself still stands, as we've said, in, in sort of a different form to when it would have first been built or even when the tale of the the poor minstrel and his, his sad demise would have occurred. Um, but the castle is now owned by the National Trust. Uh, they've owned it since the 70s and they've never actually opened it to the public. So they've never allowed people to walk around it. I do hope in some of these videos that I will get to talk about ghost stories of places that you can visit and that I may even have visited or get to visit, which would be super exciting. Um, but this isn't one of those because unfortunately the National Trust have never opened to the public. Although I could, you know, really push the boat out and sign up to rent the place because it is actually let out for a reasonable, not too bad rent for a seven bedroomed castle, to be fair. But this one is, yeah, it's got a tenant, someone lives in it. So that's sort of the story of, of Bellista Castle and that's the story of the grey man of Bellista Castle. Um, as I've said, this is my first video. So any feedback you've got on my story, please do let me know. Please do sort of pass on your messages. And maybe even let me know what you'd like to see in more of these videos or, or stories that you guys like, that you'd be interested in hearing me cover. Um, I'm just finishing him off now, so I've got his his bloody beard here, as we've heard in the story. We've got a little bit more to go. Um, but yeah, tell me more about what stories you want to hear, about if you've enjoyed this, what you have enjoyed, what you think I can do a little bit different. Um, and I hope it's just been a nice Halloween treat for you. Um, it's it's a funny Halloween this year, obviously, with everything going on. We don't need to go into that. But it means that a lot of people are going to be home this Halloween who might be used to going out, who might be used to celebrating um, with friends um, who now just need some spooky at home entertainment um which to be fair isn't all that bad it's quite nice to watch a scary film and carve some pumpkins and just have a nice dinner <laughs> for halloween and watch something spooky so i hope that i've managed to add to your little halloween um what i do have as well if you are interested um this week on my website if you go into my blog from last week i can't remember the day i think it was last thursday's blog and um, i actually uploaded a halloween card as well as an added treat for everybody this halloween so that's free to download from my website um and that again is in the same vein as i know we're all spending halloween at home this year and maybe not getting to see people that we'd usually spend halloween with um so there's a card there if you want to send it to people um or keep keep it for yourself uh, you know it's a cute little ghost and a pumpkin that i've drawn but as i've said just go on my website um which is seanellisillustration.co.uk and that's totally free to download i don't ask for any email addresses or information or anything you can just go go along and grab it um, but yeah, please do share with me ghost stories you'd like, to, like me to cover. Anything that you um, have as feedback from today's episode. Um, as I just finished the, the bundle and the weathered hands of our now gashed, frightening grey grey man. Um, and I hope that you come back for some more stories. I'm hoping to do these videos every two weeks. Um, and I might 
even get to add some extra content um, on my Patreon page for the videos as time goes on. So yeah, have, feel free to have a look at my Patreon page too. You'll find the link for that in um, the notes for this video, but it's just at this is Sean Ellis is my handle for Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, everything. So yeah, if you're new to my work and want to have a look at my illustrations, otherwise at this is Sean Ellis, come and have a look um i'm on most social media platforms so come over and say hello um and most importantly have a wonderful happy halloween thank you so much bye